Thanks for joining us here today. We're talking about cycle time reduction secrets. My name is Darren Harvell. I'm a market segment manager here at McKino. And joining me today is Mike Boyd. He's an applications leader, also has experience in quality control and also talent development of our engineering group. Thanks for joining us, Mike. Yeah, thanks for having me, Darren. Yeah, we're standing here in our experience center room. We're in our North American headquarters in Mason, Ohio, just north of Cincinnati. And I want to tell you a little bit about this capability that we have because it's something that you might be able to take advantage of in the future. We've invested in these experience center rooms so that we can collaborate with you. The digital canvas that I'm standing in front of allows us to connect with you wherever you are. We can share prints, parts. We have high definition cameras out on machines on the floor here. We can do a walk around. It's almost like you're standing in front of the machine yourself. So if you have an interest in that, you wanna to talk to one of our subject matter experts, reach out to us, we'd be happy to set up a session with you to use this technology. So this is the first of a series of events. You can go to makino.com and you can go to the events calendar to see the other ones, or you also can reach out to us through contact us, your local salesman, we'd be happy to point you to the other parts of this series that we're gonna do. And so today, Mike, we're gonna talk about the first part of this, and I know you hear from a lot of customers how important this is. Yeah, so it, there's always room for improvement. No matter how you look at it, there's always room for improvement. Some improvements are large and some are little. We're looking for those large ones. And there's definitely a very deliberate and methodical approach to reducing your machining cycle time. Some of the things we'll talk about today are the, just a general overview of how to do that. We'll dig in a little bit deeper uh, so you have something to take back with you and, and implement on your floor. And then some of these other things, you know, as we go through our other episodes coming up in the future, we'll show these demonstrations, how to reduce your cycle time by implementing some of these different, uh, these things on the, on the slide here. So when you look at your machining cycle time, the best approach really is you need to perform an audit. And what I mean by that, you need to look at each tool. You need to look at the cycle time for each cutting tool. And how do you, how do, you do that? Well, there's a couple of different ways. You can use FANUC system variables to record that time. Uh, for example, the 3001 records milliseconds. You can put that right in your machining program and record that cycle time. And you record it into a, a holding variable. So that way you can go back for every tool and look at that time. So what you're looking for then when you have this list of cycle time per tools, you're looking for the long running tools. You know, you're not looking for those, those five second, 10 second cycle time tools. You're looking for minutes. Uh, you know, that low hanging fruit, that's what you're looking for. Yeah, your biggest bang for your buck. Biggest bang for your buck. You know, a percentage of you know, 10, a 10 second with the same percentage of a five minute, you're gonna get a lot more savings out of that five minute with the same percentage mm -hmm. of reduction. So after you look at each tool and you determine which one you wanna zero in on, you wanna categorize. And what I mean by categorizing is you have to look at non-cut time versus cut time. You always have non-cut time and all non-cut time is not value added. It's, it's wasted motion, but it's needed. But what you're looking to do is optimize that non-cut time. Uh, the cut time really, you know, you're, you're looking at um, end cut. A lot of people want to dig right in and they want to improve their cut time by increasing their feed rate. You know, bring it up a notch until it breaks. You know, that's the threshold and you back it off one. You know, that type of approach. Well, we don't like, the, we don't like to start with that. And there's a couple reasons why. When you further look at the non-cut time versus cut time, you look at it in terms of risk. The non-cut time, the risk is really low. It's all, for example, motion to and from the tool changer, uh, motion from each feature, uh, coolant codes, tool changes, things like that. Things that do not involve making a chip. So that's low risk. And really that's what we're gonna focus on is the low risk items. You know, Mike, one of the analogies I always like to point to is, you know, when you're cutting your grass, you want to get that grass cut as quick as possible. So you don't want to spend a lot of time 
going back through areas that you haven't cut and having that wasted motion. You want to make sure you're minimizing that non-cut time and just cutting grass every time you're moving that lawnmower. And I, I like that analogy. I always think about that when I hear you talk about this. Yeah, it's funny you bring that up. I've seen a lot of YouTube videos, you know, people showing how to optimize their, their grass mowing and, you know, different patterns and mm -hmm. things like that. That's exactly what we're talking about. So specifically what we're talking on the non-cut time, we're talking about optimizing your R-planes. And that's the R-plane is that's your rapid plane down to the feature before you actually start making chips. Uh, sometimes that R-plane is, is, you know, uh, millimeters away from that feature. Well, you don't need to start there. You can start a lot closer. That takes time out. Some of the other things that, you know, we've got Makino special M codes that we're gonna show that take uh, the non-cut time and, and puts it kind of in a parallel process. And we'll talk a little bit about that. But moving down, you know, your highest risk, is, like I said, is that cut time and really increasing that surface footage. Uh, you're really increasing your risk there. And I, I mentioned, you know, that sometimes the approach is take that feed rate knob up a notch until the tool breaks and back it off and you find your threshold, well, we don't wanna do that. You can damage, obviously, your, your cutting tool, but uh, the, the work holding fixture and, and the machine could be damaged by that approach. So we want that low risk approach. Makes sense, yeah. So I mentioned serial versus parallel processing. And what I mean by that, serial is just that. It's, it's one task is, starts after the next task, the next task. It's linear and it's sequential. Well, there's opportunities to take this non-cut motion and time and put them in a parallel process. So graphically, if you look, you know, the serial, this particular task starts and ends, the next task starts and ends. When you take those two in parallel on top of each other, you can realize a cycle time savings. When I hear you talk about this, Mike, I always think about stealing time. And I've heard people say, well, how do you steal time? How do you get that back? And this is exactly how you do that. You do things at the same time. I like that, that's stealing time. And again, you know, taking that cycle time down to zero is the ultimate goal, but it's not reality. So these tasks have to happen, but if you take them in parallel, you're absorbing a lot of that time. So lots of areas of opportunity for this, and I've, I've got them listed here. Uh, we can go on for a, a long time here and, and reducing your cycle time. And, and really, again, we're gonna focus on that non-cut time. And a lot of these opportunities, we're gonna discuss the program optimization, the Makino M codes, the program changes, and Makino specific features, all designed to increase your throughput and reduce your machining cycle time. I like how you put this areas of opportunity. There's different things that you've experienced, your team's experienced that can um, help reduce that cycle time. You've laid out some things here. And as we said at the beginning of this, this is a series, this is part one. So we're setting the stage for you how to think about reducing your cycle time. But what I'm excited to see is in these other parts, you're gonna be getting into some of the details of what some of these uh, tips are for how to reduce that cycle time. And we're gonna be going out to machines and doing demonstrations. So you're actually gonna to get to demonstrate some of these things that you talk about. I'm really anxious to see some of that. Yeah, and, and most of these improvements we're talking about, these non-cut time improvements, can be applied across every tool. You know, you're looking at auditing that process, you're looking at the, the tools, the highest running tools at low hanging fruit. Well, this is what I'm talking about because when you identify that non-cut opportunity to reduce that cycle time, it can be applied across all cutting tools. So there's a lot of opportunity here on non-cut time. Well, thanks Mike for sharing all that information. We're really looking forward to questions, the continuous conversation. Remember, this is part one of a series, so you can go to makino.com, go to the events calendar, you can go to the content library. There's other ways you can find previous webinars that we've done. But today we're gonna to answer some of the questions. And remember, in your top right corner of your screen, there's a Q&A there. If you go down to the bottom, you type in your question, 
Mike and I are going to do our best to answer them, so we're looking forward to that. Okay, well, great. So while we're looking for questions to come in, Mike, one of the uh, things that you talked about as you're looking at what the uh, best approach is, you know, it's interesting to see and hear from people out there, you know, what some of their um, favorite things to do are when they're trying to reduce your cycle time. So we're going to start off with a poll for the audience here. We're going to kick that off here. And what you're going to see is some um, questions or a question with some answers there. You can answer as many as you want. So select all the ones that apply to you. And um, while we're waiting for some questions to come in, you can take a look at this poll and give us an idea of what's the approach that, that each of you takes. So Mike, while we're letting them uh, fill in that survey, uh, I know that recently you and your team's been out at a, a customer here in the, the Midwest. It's an automotive uh, manufacturer. And I would expect that you probably faced some of these questions about how do you reduce cycle time? Tell us about that. What what have you seen and heard while you've been at that customer? Yeah, and that specific customer you're referring to um, in Indiana, that, that was part of a, a turnkey project that we provide a full solution to the customer from um, uh, the machine platform selection all the way through to final runoff, a statistical capability runoff here at Makino and at the customer's facility. And, and cycle time, of course, is uh, right up there with quality. And it's two things we guarantee with the Makino turnkey, and that's that's quality and, and cycle time. So cycle time for them, you know, obviously it, it equates to bottom line dollars, increased throughput, a happier customer for them. And, and you know, it gets down to seconds. We had another customer that, you know, we, we were off by a half a second, and that was not acceptable, you know, a half a second. Uh, so we went back and optimized uh, the things that we knew uh, how to optimize and got that half second out and um, things were good. But as I mentioned, you know, that zero cycle time is that uh, the ultimate goal, but not reality. So, you know, anything we can do to, to or you can do to, to re reduce that cycle time, you know, that, that just improves everything. Okay, thanks, man. So we are seeing some of the results from the, the survey coming in. So the most selected answer is optimize CNC program tool paths. So that was about 35% of the people that responded. And not far behind that is audit the long running tool. So just exactly what you were recommending, Mike, um, as one of the first things you should be doing is looking at what those long running tools are and focusing on those. And then coming in next was our optimized machine positioning. And then with 13%, people would increase speeds and feeds. And we had a couple, couple people say, increase it until the tool breaks. That's my favorite. <laughs> That's the most exciting, right? That's, That's the most great. exciting. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so optimizing you the the here, Mike? No, I'm optimizing CNC program tool passes is, is, is one of the things that, you know, you can do offline in, in your CAD CAM program. Uh, you know, you can implement dynamic milling tool pass or tricordial type milling. But then you're starting to get into what, you know, we refer to as cut time, right? Uh, and, and that increases your risk uh, when you start going in to optimize your cut time. You know, quality is first and foremost. Um, so, you know, we look for those low, that low hanging fruit, the low risk items. And, and that's really where we like to start as a non cut time. Right. Uh, we're very conservative typically in, in, in our approaches with, with, with turnkey projects, very conservative um, out of the gate with non cut time. Because uh, we're looking first to get a quality part off the off the equipment. And then we'll go back and we'll, we'll look for those areas of opportunity and start implementing these, these things to, to improve that uh, non-cut time. So Mike, um, we've got a, some questions that have started to come in. So I'll take a look at those and we'll start, start answering some of those. Uh, one question has to do with 
um, a specialty code for reducing pallet retract. And the person is wanting to know, you know, have we seen any success with that? And is that something that we've been able to successfully implement and can you share more about that? Yeah, that's referring to the M630. We'll, we'll, uh, we have an episode coming up. Uh, we're we're going to dig into that a little bit deeper. You do see a savings with it. I, you know, with a lot of these things, it's application specific. Uh, sometimes you don't see that much of a savings, but th there are savings there. Um, I, I would I would say, you know, look at other areas of opportunity uh, first, but this is definitely an area that you can save. Uh, you know, it, and it, it does increase the risk slightly because reducing that Z retract before tool change, uh, you got to make sure that's out of the way of the, the tool before you position over to the tool change. But and my, yeah, you, there, there, are, there are potential savings there. Okay. And you commented that you're going to be demonstrating that in one of the other episodes coming up. And um, that's one of the you're going to be getting into. Um, with more detail in one of the episodes where we're going to go out to a machine and demonstrate it. That's right. Okay, great. Okay, another question we got coming in has to do with, you mentioned um, the R-plane and trying to reduce that value to get as close to the part as you can. Is there a recommendation for that? Or how do you decide what the optimum value is? Well, that's a rapid plane. That's your, your, your point that you wrap it to and Z. Uh, before you initiate uh, uh, cutting or machining. So, you know, I mean, you start with, say, call it a millimeter. Uh, if you're, especially if you're wrapping on top of the part, um, I, you know, that's kind of where I start. You can reduce that, you take it down to 100 microns. Uh, but if you're going up to the side of a part to do some profile milling or something like that, I mean, wrap it right down to that Z. You know, I, I, there's really no reason to, to hit and, and, and feed down wrap it right down to that and take that uh, that time out, that non-cut time. Okay, great. Um, another question I see here that came in has to do with the uh, special M codes. On your list, uh, you showed areas of opportunity. And again, you're going to be talking about that, I know, in more detail in our next episodes. But this question is, is it, is it possible to create a new special M code based on the, a certain specific set of circumstances that this person might have. Yeah, and that's referring to uh, the FANUC or FANUC, however you want to pronounce it. Um, those functionality where you can create either an M or a G code for a macro call. Um, so it, it's basically, you know, issue define an M code that's not used, that's not a standard M code and, and create that and have it call a macro to do whatever you want it to do inside that macro. Um, the macro calls, you can pass arguments uh, on that same line. So it's basically replacing the uh, uh, G65, P, whatever macro call with just an M or a G code. So, yeah, you can certainly do that on the, on the FANUC side. Um, that's a FANUC function. Okay. And as we said, the areas of opportunity that were on that slide, um, question here, person wanted to know, are we going to go into more detail? And I guess just to point that out again, that um, this is part one. We have uh, seven more episodes planned that we're going to be showing. So Mike is going to be able to go into all those different areas of opportunity he showed on that slide. And as we said, we're going to go out to a machine. We're going to go on an A51NX and Mike, you're going to be able to actually demonstrate and show the cycle time savings by implementing some of those things. And again, initially, it's, it's focusing on the non-cut time. And one other person asked about how to, to handle things when they're in a bit, they say they're in a busy shop, they're running production, they don't have time available to, to get into some of these things. Does Makino provide this as a service to come in and help with this type of thing? Yeah, absolutely. We've got a full team of application engineers. You know, I mentioned turnkey projects. We also have, you know, full integration automation product projects that, and services that, that we offer, kind of cradle the, the grave, if you will, uh, that, that we offer as a service. But in addition to that, our application engineers can certainly uh, provide either remote support or even on-site support. 
Yep, we're there for, for that. Okay. And another question that came in, Mike's talking about um, or asking, do all these techniques work on all models and machines? That's a good question. What we're going to focus on is the A-series horizontal uh, milling machines that we offer. Uh, so all of the A-series machines have these standard uh, options uh, available on the Professional 6 control. Um, but some of the techniques that we're going to talk about, too, are, are applicable to any product, uh, uh, even vertical products, you know, reducing, reducing uh, uh, positioning uh, type movements and things like that. Okay. And this question is asking about M630, wanting to know what amount uh, is the reduction in the retraction distance. So that depends on obviously your fixture, your length of tool, uh, the part that's on the fixture, you know, what you, you reduce it as much as you can so before, you know, you, you obviously don't want to have a collision as you're moving to the tool changer. So uh, based on that, you know, th then you can set your Z stroke um, right into, and, and like Darren, you said, you know, we're going to go into more detail on this M630 in mm -hmm. a later episode, uh, but you can set that per tool. Okay, and again, what I'm understanding you to say is there isn't just one set answer for that, right? It's dependent on your application. So you wanna optimize it uh, and reduce it as much as possible, but it's right. not one set answer is what I'm hearing you say. That's right, absolutely. Okay, okay. and you, you talked about how to, you know, since the focus is on these long running tools, and like we said in our, you know, I was, happy to see in the survey that a lot of people said that's what they do. You know, they start focusing on on those long running tools. Um, you talked a little bit about how to use 3001, how to uh, record that time and to save that so you can see that. You talked a little bit about that. Can you explain a little bit more? There was a person asking for just a little bit more um, detailed explanation of how that works. Yeah, so that's a, another FANUC. Um, uh, feature it's a system variable and 3001 is is it, it basically the, the time cycle time in seconds it's, it's just a timer it's on a machine so what you do is at the very beginning of uh, a particular tool path uh, before the tool change you just reset that timer and then at the end of that right before the next tool change you record that time divided by a thousand because that's milliseconds but you save that into a a system or not a system but a holding variable fanic holding variable for that tool and basically what what i i usually do is i i pick say a 700 series system or holding variable and whatever that t number is it would be seven if it's tool number one set it at 701 that's where i would save that time that way it's easy i can go back and look at my my holding variables and, and pull those times out and record those times we also have a machining results screen on a professional six uh, that'll show you the same cycle times for each tool. Okay, great. Um, we're getting close to the end of questions. So while I'm, anyone who has any last questions, go ahead and get those in as we're wrapping up here. And while we're waiting on that, I'll just point out to everybody, if you go up to your top right hand corner, there's a uh, indication for handouts there. If you click on handouts, there are two PDF documents there for you that you can download. One of them is the slides that Mike showed today. So uh, you'll get a PDF of the, the slides from today's presentation. And also there's another PDF that you can download there, which is a, a short article that talks about the advantages and reasons why you'd want to reduce your cycle time and kind of gives a little bit of a teaser for some of the things that we're going to go into more detail in our upcoming series uh, that we're going to be doing in the near future. So go there to the handouts, download those. And um, if you have any other questions, of course, you can always reach out to your local salesman or go to Makino.com, contact us and we'll answer any questions you have. So I, Guess as we're wrapping up here, Mike, time for another uh, one last question. Um, this question has to do with the special features. Again, on the opportunities slide that you showed, uh, there were uh, Makino special features there. And 
question again was, are those, um, are those standard on, on all machines? Yes, yes, they are standard. Um, they're standard on the professional six controls. Uh, so, it, and those are referring to, um, and again, we'll have another segment coming up to dig in deeper on these, but Makino specific uh, features are, they're, you know, GI drilling, GI milling, IAC, inertia active control, and they, and they all center around, again, reducing that non-cut uh, time on, on, on your, uh, on your Makinos uh, to improve your cycle time. Okay, great. So as we wrap up here today, I want to thank everybody for, for joining us. And, and Darren, just to jump in here, looks like uh, some people are saying the handouts are not showing. Yeah, if, if you have trouble uh, getting to those, just again, reach out to us and we'll make sure to, to send to you uh, whatever information we're unable to, to get to. And then I mentioned there, we have another episode coming up, uh, possibly in about a month or so. That's right, Mike. So on July 13th at 1.30, we're going to do part two. And Mike, what are you going to be covering in part two? Um, we're talking program is, optimization. Yeah, well. optimizing you know, your program strategies, uh, distance uh, from, the, from your ATC, your tool changer to, to your first parts, optimizing that. Um, so, yeah, we're going to be talking about and, and also parameter change to help with that. Great. All right. so, everybody, change. so everybody uh, go to the, uh, your registration page. If you go to Makino.com and events page, you can register for that. Um, so hope to see you um, whenever we are here again. So again, thank you. Thanks, Mike. And see you next time. Thank you.